Hello and welcome to Wednesday Interlude, in which I shine the spotlight on Robert Louis Stevenson. Robert Louis Stevenson was born on the 13th of November 1850 in Edinburgh, Scotland. Stevenson was a novelist, a poet, a short story writer and a travel writer. Robert Louis Stevenson is most noted for Treasure Island, Kidnapped, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and a Charles Garden of Verses. Born and educated in Edinburgh, Stevenson suffered from serious bronchial trouble for most, much of his life, but continued to write prolifically and travel widely, in defiance of his poor health. As a young man, he mixed in London literary circles, receiving encouragement from Andrew Lang, Edmund Goss, Leslie Stephen and W. E. Henley, the last of whom may have provided the model for Long John Silver in Treasure Island. Stevenson spent several years in search of a location suited to his health before finally settling in Samoa. Stevenson was a celebrity in his own time being admired by many other writers, including George Louis Borges, Bertolt Brecht, Marcel Proust, Arthur Conan Doyle, Henry James, Caesar Pavese, Emilia Salgari, Ernest Hemingway, Rudyard Kipling, Jack London, Vladimir Nabokov, J. M. Barry, and G.K. Chesterton. However, Stevenson attracted a more negative critical response for much of the 20th century, falsely being considered a children's author, whereas in fact even Treasure Island and Kidnapped are best read in adulthood, though his reputation has since been largely restored. He is currently ranked as the 26th most translated author in the world. Stevenson's father was Thomas Stevenson, a leading lighthouse engineer, and in fact lighthouse design was the family's profession. Robert's grandfather was civil engineer Robert Stevenson, and Robert's uncles, Alan and David, were in the same field. Thomas's maternal grandfather, Thomas Smith, had been in the same profession. However, Robert's mother's family were gentry, tracing their lineage back to Alexander Balfour, in the 15th century. Stevenson was a late reader, learning at the age of seven or eight, but even before this he dictated stories to his mother and nurse, and he compulsively wrote stories throughout his childhood. His father was proud of this interest. He had also, he, he, he had also written stories in his spare time until his own father found them and told him to give up such nonsense and mind your business. He paid for the printing of Robert's first publication at 16, entitled The Pentland Rising, a page of history 1666. It was an account of the Covenanters' Rebellion, which was published in 1866, the 200th anniversary of the event. In November 1867, at the age of 17, Stevenson entered the University of Edinburgh to study engineering but he was less than enthusiastic. He was far more interested in the debating society, amateur dramatics and art. In April 1871, Stevenson notified his father of his decision to pursue a life of letters. Though the elder Stevenson was naturally uh, disappointed, the surprise cannot have been great and Stevenson's mother reported that he was wonderfully resigned to his son's choice. To provide some security, it was agreed that Stevenson should read law again at Edinburgh University and be called to the Sc Scottish Bar. By late 1873, Stevenson was active in London literary life, becoming acquainted with many of the writers of the time. Stephen was sent to Menton on the French Riviera in November 1873 to recuperate after his health failed. He returned, to, he returned 
in better health in April 1874 and settled down to his studies, but he returned to France several times after that. He made long and frequent trips to the neighbourhood of the forest of Fontainebleau, staying at Barbizon, Grace Salon and Nimours, and becoming a member of the artists' colonies there. He also travelled to Paris to visit galleries and the theatres. He qualified for the Scottish Bar in July 1875, and his father added a brass plate to the Harry Row House, reading R. L. Stevenson, Advocate. His law studies did influence his books, but he never practised law. All his energies were spent in travel and writing. One of his journeys was a canoe voyage in Belgium and France with Sir Walter Simpson, a friend from the Speculative Society and who was a frequent travel companion. This trip was the basis of Stevenson's first travel book, An Inland Voyage, which he published in 1878. The canoe voyage with Simpson brought Stevenson to Gretz in September 1876, where he met Fanny van de Grift Osborne, who had been born in Indianapolis. She had married at age 17 and moved to Nevada to rejoin her husband Samuel after his participation in the American Civil War. But anger over her husband's infidelities led to a number of separations. In 1875, she had taken her children to France, where she and her daughter Isabel studied art. Stevenson returned to Britain shortly after this first meeting, but Fanny apparently remained in his thoughts, and he wrote the essay on falling in love for the Cornhill magazine. They met again early in 1877 and became lovers. Stevenson spent much of the following year with her and her children in France. She also had a son called Lloyd. In August 1878, she returned to San Francisco and Stevenson remained in Europe, making the walking trip that formed the basis for Travels with a Donkey in the Cévennes, which he published in 1879. But he set off to join her in August 1879, against the advice of his friends and without notifying his parents. He took second-class passage on the steamship Devonia, in part to save money, but also to learn how others travelled and to increase the adventures of the journey. He then travelled overland by train from New York City to California. It was good experience for his writing, but it broke his health. He was near death when he arrived in Monterey, California, where some local ranchers nursed him back to health. By December 1879, Stevenson had recovered his health enough to continue to San Francisco where he struggled all alone on 45 cents a day, and sometimes less, with quantities of hard work and many heavy thoughts, in an effort to support himself through his writing. But by the end of the winter his health was broken again, and he found himself at death's door. Fanny was now divorced, and she came to his bedside and nursed him to recovery. After a while, he wrote, my spirit got up again in a divine frenzy and has since kicked and spurred my vile body forward with great emphasis and success. When his father heard of his condition, he cabled him money to help him through this period. Fanny and Robert were married in May 1880, although he said that he was a mere complication of cough and bones much fitter for an emblem of mortality than a bridegroom. He travelled with his new wife and her son Lloyd north of San Francisco to Napa Valley and spent a summer honeymoon at an abandoned mining camp at Mount St. Helena. He wrote about this experience in The Silverado Squatters. He met Charles Warren Stoddard, the co-editor of the Overland Monthly and author of Sad Sea Idols, who urged Stevenson to travel to the South Pacific, an idea which returned to him many years later. In August 1880, he sailed with Fanny and Lloyd from New York to Britain and found his parents and his friend Sidney Colvin on the wharf at Liverpool, happy to see him return home. Fanny was able to make herself a part of the family through her charm and wit. Stevenson searched in vain between 1880 and 1887 for a residence suitable to his health. 
He spent his summers at various places in Scotland and England, including Westbourne, Dorset, a residential area in Bournemouth. It was during his time in Bournemouth that he wrote the story Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, naming the character Mr Paul after the town of Paul, which is situated next to Bournemouth. In Westbourne he named his home, his house, Skirrybore, after the tallest lighthouse in Scotland, which his uncle Alan had b b built. In the winter time, Stevenson travelled to France and lived at Davos Platz and the Chalet de Solitude at Hayes, where he was very happy for a time. I have so many things to make life sweet for me, he wrote. It seems a pity I cannot have that other one thing, health. Though you'll be angry to hear it, I believe, for myself at least, what is best. In spite of his ill health, he produced the bulk of his best-known work during these years. Treasure Island was published under the pseudonym Captain George North and became his first widely popular book. He wrote it during this time along with Kidnapped, Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which established his wider reputation, The Black Arrow, A Tale of the Two Roses, A Charles Garden of Verses, and Underwoods. He gave a copy of Kidnapped to his friend and frequent Scurryville visitor, Henry James. His father died in 1887 and Stevenson felt free to follow the advice of his physician to try a complete change of climate. So he headed for Colorado with his mother and family, but after landing in New York they decided to spend the winter in the Adirondacks at a cure cottage now known as Stevenson's Cottage at Saranac Lake, New York. During the intensely cold winter Stevenson wrote some of his best essays. He also began the Master of Ballantrae and light-heartedly planned a cruise to the South Pacific Ocean for the following summer. In June 1888, Stevenson chartered the yacht Casco and set sail with his family from San Francisco. The sea air and thrill of adventure for a time restored his health and for nearly three years he wandered the eastern and central Pacific, stopping for extended stays at the Hawaiian Islands, where he became a good friend of King Kalakaua. He befriended the king's niece, Princess Victoria Kaolani, who also had Scottish heritage. He spent time at the Gilbert Islands, Tahiti, New Zealand and the Samoan Islands. During this period he completed the Master of Ballantrae, composed two ballads based on the legends of the islanders and wrote the Bottle Imp. He preserved the experience of these years in his various letters and in his In the South Seas, which was published posthumously. He made a voyage in 1889 with Lloyd on the trading schooner Equator, visiting various of the Gilbert Islands. Stevenson left Sydney, Australia on the Janet Nicoll in April 1890 for his third and final voyage among the South Sea Islands. He intended to produce another book of travel writing to follow his earlier book in the South Seas, but it was his wife who eventually published her journal of their third voyage. In 1890 Stevenson purchased a tract of about 400 acres, 1.6 square kilometres, in Upolu, an island in Samoa where he established himself on his estate in the village of Valima after two aborted attempts to visit Scotland. He took the native name Tusitala, Samoan for Terror of Tales. His influence spread among the Samoans who consorted him for advice and he soon became involved in local politics. He was convinced that the European officials who had been appointed to, to rule the Samoans were incompetent and he published a footnote to history after many futile attempts to resolve the matter. This was such a stinging protest against the existing conditions that it resulted in the recall of two officials and Stevenson feared for a time that it 
would result in his own deportation. He also found time to work at his writing, although he felt that there was never any man had so many irons in the fire. He wrote the B -b 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 Beach of Felisa, Catriona, the Ebb Tide, and the Valima letters during this period. Stevenson grew, grew depressed and wondered if he had exhausted his creative vein as he had been overworking and that the the b b best he could write was d d d d d ditch water. He even feared that he might again become a helpless invalid. He rebelled against this idea. I wish to die in my boots. No more land of counterpane for me. To be drowned, to be shot, to be thrown from a horse, I to be hanged, rather than pass again through that slow d d d d dissolution. He then, he then suddenly had a return of energy and he began work on Weir of Herbiston. It's so good that it frightens me, he's reported to have exclaimed. He felt that this was the best work he had done. On the 3rd of December 1894, Stevenson was talking to his wife and straining to open a bottle of wine when he suddenly exclaimed, what's that? And asked his wife, D -d 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 does my face look strange? and collapsed. He died within a few hours, probably of a cerebral hemorrhage. He was 44 years old. The Samoans insisted on surrounding his body with a watch guard during the night and on bearing him on their shoulders to nearby Mount Vea, where they buried him on a spot overlooking the sea on land donated by British acting Vice Consul Thomas Trude. Stevenson had always wanted his requiem inscribed on his tomb. Under the wide and starry sky, dig the grave and let me lie. Glad did I live and gladly die, and I laid me down with a will. This be the verse you grave for me, here he lies where he longed to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea, and the hunter home from the hill. In this brief introduction, I could only hit some of the highlights, but if you'd like to discover more about Robert Louis Stevenson's life and work, I can recommend RLS, a life study by Jenny Calder, which is a truly excellent biography, and Fanny Stevenson by Alexandra Lapierre, which explores Stevenson from the perspective of his wife as muse adventurous and romantic enigma, another really excellent biography from the female perspective. In the resources section below you will find links to Project Gutenberg to a wide selection of his works. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of Robert Louis Stevenson's works and what you thought of them.